The Successful Servant Leader Podcast is all about the pioneer woman on her unique journey of becoming and being who God has called her to be. The divine connection between the wealth mindset and success in every area of our lives can no longer be denied. Successful Servant Leader teaches us how to increase our confidence and strategically and effectively serve while in the pursuit of success in our lives, our faith, and our businesses. I'm your host, Victoria Grace, and welcome to the show. Hello, SSL family. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this movement. Of course, I'm so glad that you're here. Give yourself a huge pat on the back for intentionally choosing to be a part of this conversation that will surely help all of us level up spiritually, personally, and professionally. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and make sure that you hit that subscribe button on whatever app you're listening on. You'll get a fresh episode on either The Wealthy Place, Healthy Behavior Change, and current topics related to the modern day servant leader and the modern day pioneer woman every single week. Happy new week and happy new month. Even though you're getting this at the end of November, by the time we speak again, it will be December. So hello, December. Happy new week and happy new month. I pray that your last week was off the chain, especially with the holiday. Um, But if it wasn't, Let's do what we can together to make sure that not only this week is, but this entire month of December is off the chain, that you're finishing out 2022 with the power, with the authority and the grace that God has already bestowed upon you, that you're actually tapping in, that you're actually doing what God has called you to do, that you're actually breaking what he's called you to break, that you're actually building what he's called you to build. This is my prayer for you. So again, happy, happy new week and happy, happy new month. Today's biblical truth is based off of 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. And it says, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So our biblical truth says, My strength is renewed always because I hope in the Lord. I will prosper and be in great health even as my soul prospers. Say this again with me. This is so important that you make sure that it comes out of your own mouth. My strength is renewed always because I hope in the Lord. I will prosper and be in great health even as my soul prospers. So even as your soul prospers, even as you grow in spirit and in truth, your health, right? Your health in the natural will still prosper, will still be strong, especially right now where it's like cold and flu season. People are getting sick left and right. Children are getting sick. We just want to declare and decree this over our life. Okay. And so what should you do next after you speak this biblical truth out of your own mouth? Of course, Stand firmly on it, period. Stand firmly on this truth and believe that you have the power and the authority through Christ to mentally and physically align yourself with God's truth regularly and consistently, not just on occasion. And when you do this, this means that when you align yourself with his truth, this becomes your truth in the natural and in the spiritual. You guys already know that our biblical truths come directly from our amazing community, Dare to Pursue, aka Sisters in Pursuit, and the link is available in the bio if you'd like to join us. This is something that we give off on a regular basis. This is not something that we just talk about once a week, okay? So if you would like to have biblical truths sent directly to your phone on a regular basis, click that link in the bio and join our amazing community. It is 100% free. As we prepare to go into this week's episode, as you can see, the title here is Hello December. Hello December, which means we are in the last 
month of 2022, which means we are about to begin a new year. And I've been saying it for quite some time now. God does not want you to start that new thing right when you are supposed to start that new thing. God does not want you to work right now to change your diet for your fasting or for your weight loss goals in 2023. He wants you to start now. Again, let me say it again. He wants you to start now. So as we say hello to December, even three days before December 1st, we are starting now. We're doing the work now. And so again, I have to say to you guys, whether you join my Dare to Pursue community or you choose another way to Dare to Pursue, you have to understand that the pursuit is always free. It costs you nothing. All you have to do is make the choice to pursue. That's all you have to do. And once you make that choice, then God will give you the additional instructions and blueprints and and what he may want you to give up or what he may want you to add on to your plate, right? You have to make the choice to pursue. Don't wait till January 1st to make the choice to pursue. Okay, don't do that. Start Today, three days before December 1st, start now, get the revelation from God now, go to him and talk to him now and see what it is that he wants you to do, what he wants you to accomplish if you haven't already, because if, yeah, if you haven't already go to him and see God, okay, what is your vision that you have for me for the month of December? Okay, God, what is your vision that you have for me for the year of 2023? Even if he just gives you one word right now, you stand on that word until he further unfolds and unveils what he wants you to do. Don't wait till the first to decide you're going to have a relationship with God, to decide you're going to start on your weight loss goals, to decide that you want to learn more about your spiritual gifts, to decide that you want to start that business, to decide, no, start now. And I'm... Let me mention it too for some of you to decide that you're going to do the work to start that ministry. Start now. Okay. So hello, December. This episode is going to go into four different topics and I just have to go into it because I just feel like, oh, I come on here and, and, and I share with you guys, but I also have to be real. I have to be really, really real. And our first topic that I really want to talk about is having balance as you become more knowledgeable. Now, this entire podcast is about becoming more knowledgeable so that we don't perish for a lack of knowledge from day one. If you're brand new, welcome girl. This is what this is all about. Okay. And if you're a guy, welcome. But from the very beginning, we have been doing our due diligence to become more knowledgeable in the things of God, in the things of the spirit, so that as we walk about this earth and vessel, so that as we dare to pursue, We don't perish for a lack of knowledge or we don't fail for a lack of knowledge. At this point, if you are to perish or if you are to fail or whatever the case may be, it's because of your own choice and because of your own free will, not because you didn't know. And again, I don't know everything and I haven't been able to tell you everything, but as I find out, I share with you. And as you guys find out, you guys reach out to me and share with me as well. And so... We're learning together as we go, but I do believe that as we learn, it is all in God's divine and correct timing. So you're never behind in what you're learning, right? You're never behind in the new knowledge that you're gaining, right? You're never behind. You're always operating in your correct times and seasons, just like the sons of Issachar. And if you have not declared and decreed this over this yet, over yourself yet, because you're new here or you're just, you know, you're a little hard headed. Like I can be sometimes say it with me right now. I operate in my correct times and seasons, just like the sons of Issachar. I operate in my correct time and season, just like the sons of Issachar. This means that 
all the knowledge that you're gaining and that you're obtaining, even if you're new here, this is your first episode, you're right on time, right? When you start that podcast or that YouTube or or you start to minister on your job, you're doing it in its correct time and season. So I want to just knock away any guilt and shame. I want to knock away anything that has been coming to you because you haven't started yet. I want to just knock that away for those of you that may be new here because God did not give you a spirit of guilt and shame and fear and timidity and all those things. He gave you a spirit of love, power, a sound mind and self-discipline. This is what he gave you. And so with that being said, for all of my newbies, got that out the way. Now, having balance as you become more knowledgeable, okay, this is so important. And I said we have four topics, we really have three because the subtopic is going to go with having this balance. Now, you guys know that I love to understand words and what they really mean. And so I want to go into what this word balance means, This term balance, of course, has origins and roots from Latin, right? Latin roots. And it means by or twice or having to. And if we keep going in, it means to scale or pan. And then it says uh, having two scale pans and then a balancer and to balance from the old French. And then from the Middle English, um, which is connected to the Old French, it just says balance as a noun or balancer as a verb. And it again goes back into stating that Latin origin of having two scale pans or from the word or the sub word by. Um, and so the actual definition states an even distribution of weight, enabling someone or something to remain upright and steady. The ability of a boat, for example, to stay on course without adjustment of the rudder, which is the rudder which would allow it or disable it from going in the correct direction, right? Then it says a condition in which different elements are equal or in correct proportions. And then under this one, it says stability of one's mind or feelings. Okay. And then the relative volume of various sources of sound. This is so good, you guys. And then it says harmony of design and proportion. The next one says an apparatus for weighing, especially one with a central pivot beam and a pair of scales going back to those Latin origins or roots. Uh, And then it says a counteracting weight or force and then a predominating weight or force or amount, the maturity. And so you can look into these words yourself and kind of get what God is really saying here. And so what he gave me, especially during this time of the year, as I have become more knowledgeable and I've shared with you guys different things about this world that I've learned and that God has given me revelation on and and understanding the roots and the true history of these holidays that we celebrate. One thing that I'm doing right now is learning the true history of the nation of Israel, uh, really learning who Israel is. If you're on social media, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit in depth today. But really having balance as you become more knowledgeable, because remember, we are in the world, but we are what? Not of the world. So because we are in the world, we are still. And I want to come to you guys from a place of being a African-American woman a millennial African-American woman. And according to statistics, we are the most knowledgeable generation that has ever been. We are the generation, we are the generation in which we are the quickest to tell somebody no. And we are the quickest to go and find out for ourselves and do our research for ourselves. We are the most learned generation. and, And that is, you can look that up. And so that's not to say that the generations that came before us are not smart or anything like that, but they did the best with what they knew and what they knew to do, I guess. Okay. And so because we are so knowledgeable, 
it has been very difficult sometimes to be like, oh, I'm, well, I'm not going to celebrate Christmas or I'm not going to celebrate Thanksgiving because it's pagan. Or when I learned about Easter, I no longer call Easter Easter. I only call it Resurrection, Resurrection Sunday because I know the roots of the word Easter and the roots of not just the word, but why it is what it is and why it is called what it is. And so that's just to name a few. All of the holidays, all of the things, there is something to do. So good, y'all, <laughs> and I know I brought this word to you guys before this word paganism, uh, there is something to do with something. Okay. And so when I took it to God specifically, when I learned some more about Thanksgiving, because I didn't really have any type of revelation on it, I say, okay, God, you know what? This is all beginning to be a little bit too much because yes, I know that there are Hebrew holidays and traditions that we are supposed to acknowledge right where I supposed to acknowledge and sep- and celebrate but I don't have the full understanding of it yet I don't have the full knowledge of that yet and I'm in this world right even though I'm not of this world I am still in this world so I still have my mom my dad my grandma my, all the people right and yes it's cool to bring new things to them and say you know what? we're supposed to do this it's in the bible but like I said going back to being an African American woman a millennial African-American woman and really realizing as you grow up, what is our, our history? What is our roots? Right. And only knowing as much as my grandmother knows and as much as she can recall and, and tell me from where she grew up and what she knew and, and what her mother told her, that's all I know. Right. People from, other nationalities and other tribes. This is something that I've learned here. Like race was a something that was just created. According to God, he separates us by tribes. So according to other races, if you will, for lack of a better word, or nationalities or ethnicities, most of these people have a culture of their own. Right. And yes, we as black people, we have a culture of our own, but it is so divided on so many different levels. And if you can't see that or if you haven't seen that, ask God to open your eyes and ask him why. And I'm going to share just a little bit of that why here briefly. But we are so divided. And, and, you know, I just started to think like, okay, what are the traditions that my family has? Other than, you know, putting up a Christmas tree because that's something that we've done every single year. Why do we do it? Well, probably because that's what we were told to do and that's what we learned and uh, making a turkey every year for Christmas or for Thanksgiving. Why do we do it? Okay, because somebody told us to do it or that's because what we learned. Right. And so, you know, God gave me peace in this area because at first, you guys, I was just like, I'm not celebrating anything. I'm not doing anything, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what's right. I don't know or not what's right. But yeah, what's right? I don't know. I just I was in the space where I just was like, I don't know. And he brought to me this concept of having balance as I become more knowledgeable. Because again, I want to train my child up in the way that he should go and whatever I practice and believe in and and partake in and any traditions and things like that. He's most likely going to do the same thing as he grows up. And so there are some things that I do not celebrate anymore, period. And Halloween is one of them. I shared that with you guys and, you know, my dad and my mom didn't really understand it initially, but they understand it now. But when it came to the other ones, it's like, we still have to have time with family. We still have to have moments in time. And and according to this world that we live in, but we are not of, right? The time around Thanksgiving is the time where people have off work. The timing around Christmas is the time where people have off work. The timing around Easter is the time that people have off work. And again, I'm just sharing this with you guys because I want you to remember to have balance as you learn more information. As you become more knowledgeable, I want you to have balance and not be upset with yourself or feel shameful or guilty or any of the things that are just not of God. If you can't necessarily celebrate in the way that 
God wants you to celebrate or if you start to feel bad for celebrating, that might be a little bit different, right? Like for Halloween specifically, it was like a no, a very much a conviction. I could not do that anymore. And as I learn more and make certain decisions for my family, I will share that with you guys because I, I do want to be transparent. But I really wanted to just bring this to you guys. Have balance as you become more knowledgeable. Now, let's go into Israel. I have been following this channel on YouTube for quite some time. It is called Truth unedited. Again, that is truth unedited. This is where I have been learning a lot of my information and I have been getting a lot of different resources from. And if you're interested, go and check them out on YouTube. Uh, It is a guy. He runs the page. It is really, really great. You want to learn about the history of religion. I'm a history buff too. So this is right up my alley. I love learning about history. I love learning the truth because I love Jesus. So just matching those two together, child, it's just been so great, so much fun. And again, like I said, the enemy tried to come in with with some confusion and, and, and tried to really get me off track. But God immediately brought it to me, balance as you become more knowledgeable. And so, like I said, he does have a series called The History of Religion. He is doing a series right now on the history of Israel right? What happened to Israel after they killed their Messiah? Like, oh my goodness, y'all. And I've been reading the Old Testament. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you something here really quickly, a scripture. But haven't you guys ever wondered what happened to the nation of Israel after they killed their Messiah? It's just, it's good information. It's good to know. So this brings me to these celebrities that have been out and have been talking. And I need you to know that as the world becomes more knowledgeable on who Israel really is, on who God's AKA chosen people are, I need you to also understand. I Please, please turn your volume up if you need to right now. I need you to understand that Even when you come to the realization of who Israel really is, even when you come to the realization of who God's chosen people actually were and how the people that are in Israel right now making decisions and the people who are saying that they are Jewish, (laughs) historically, it does not add up. Historically speaking, it does not add up. Again, it just does not ha- add up. And God gave me a dream. Oh, a dream. Oh, my goodness. Right before Kanye came out with his with what he said right before. What's his name? Kyrie Irving came out. Now, he didn't even come out. All he did was retweet something and they blew it completely out of proportion. This is another thing. You guys have to make sure that you're not allowing the uh, the media to control your emotions, that you are so connected to God that you see right through the enemy's traps and schemes. OK, this is what it means to be successful servant leader. This is what it means to be real MVP, that you are not blinded by the works of the enemy, a.k.a. the media. This is why he's calling us to be voice. Voices, okay, that's why he's calling you to be successful servant leader and real MVP. That's why he needs our voices of truth, of his truth to speak out in all of the chaos and, and, and all of the, the lies that are being spewed and the hatred that is being spewed. So again, that's a whole different topic. But God gave me a dream before Kyrie and before Kanye, and it was in big, bold words, anti-Semitism anti-semitism and i'm like what i ain't even really knew i knew what it meant but then i didn't really know what it mean okay i'm like what does that mean so i looked it up and it, it is any hatred toward jewish people jewish customs jewish things any type of hatred dislike dismay anything like that so i'm just like okay like huh it's not really clicking for me at that time and then boom i don't know who did it first but the the the, the whole thing with Kyrie came out then the whole thing with kanye came out And this word anti-Semitism or anti-Semitic was everywhere. Now, at this point, this is weeks ago, but I I feel led to be able to share it with you now. And so now there is this debate on who are the real Jewish people, right? And to be honest, Kyrie only retweeted a book 
the media decided to shed light on this. Whatever team he plays for, this is how much I don't know about these <laughs> about these people, you guys. Whatever team he plays for could have just came to him and said, you know what, this is anti-Semitic and we feel as though you should not do this. We need you to delete it. But no, they had a media frenzy about it. Everybody's talking about it. And the enemy's puppets in the, the, the Hollywood industry, they're talking about it, right? And so same thing with Kanye. Now, he on a whole different level. But I want to say this. God does not need celebrities to speak his truth, okay? Because even though Kyrie retweeted that and then it, it blew up into this thing and then he started to give his two cents. He ain't really given his two cents on the basis of what God has said on the basis of God's truth. So please know and understand that Kanye, on the other hand, I don't really have a comment on him right now. I, I'm just I think he needs real spiritual guidance, real Holy Spirit led guidance. And that's all I'm going to say on that. But I need you guys to not be blinded to the enemy's devices. It's not by chance or coincidence that this is a thing right now. And as we go into 2023, more people will begin to talk about this as you're on social media, as you're doing your history into the things of God, as you're maybe learning more about the history of Israel or or learning about the history of religion or just going deeper into the Old Testament and into the Bible. You may see other people come up and start to talk about things. For instance, there is a group and they believe that since they know that there are the original Hebrews or whatever the case may be, you guys, <laughs> I'm going I'm to just say the name Hebrew Israelites. They believe that God hates other people. And that's not true. It's not true. And let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you now, before I tell you that now, I do want to give you guys just a little bit of scriptural context of how we know for a fact that throughout history, Different people have been moved to different places. And we know from Deuteronomy 28, right? We know from Deuteronomy 20, 28, all of the curses of the people of Israel that, that, that happened to them and the people that it most directly aligns with, as well as, like I told you guys, I've been in the Old Testament. That's just where God has had me here lately. And something I found very interesting was the fact that leprosy is not just what most of us may know it as. So if you've ever done any research on leprosy or you watched a TV show, right, about Jesus, God, anything like that, usually leprosy is a condition of the skin where there is bumps. But that is not the only description or way to know that somebody has leprosy, okay? I just learned this and I'm and, and here I am reading the Bible like God told me to. And this is what I find in Second Kings five. And I'm going to read from verse 20 through 27. But I'm going to give you a synopsis of the entire chapter really, really quickly. So basically, the prophet Elisha. Yes, the prophet Elisha healed a man named Naaman. Yeah, healed a man named Naaman. He healed him from leprosy. And when he healed him, Naaman was a rich man and Naaman wanted to pay Elisha for healing him, basically. And Elisha said, no, I cannot take your money and I will not take your money. And so this is where we get to verse 20. And now Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. And it says, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, my master should not have let this Armenian get away with accepting any of his gifts. As surely as the Lord lives, I will chase after him and get something from him. So Gehazi set off after Naaman. When Naaman saw Gehazi running after him, he climbed down from his chariot and went to meet him. Is everything all right? Naaman asked. Yes, Gaze, I ask, but my master has sent me to tell you that two young prophets from the hill country of Ephraim have just arrived. He would like 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing 
to give to them. Now, this is a lie, you guys. He just lied to him. Now, Naaman insisted, by all means, take twice as much silver. He gave him two sets of clothing, tied up the money in two bags, and sent two of his servants to carry the gifts for Gehazi. But when they arrived at the citadel, Gehazi took the gifts from the servants and sent the men back. Then he went and hid the gifts inside the house. When he went in to his master, Elisha said to him, or Elisha asked him, where have you been Gehazi? And Gehazi replied, I haven't been anywhere. Verse 26, but Elisha asked him, don't you realize that I was there in spirit when Naaman stepped down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to receive money and clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and cattle and male and female servants? Verse 27, because you have done this, you and your descendants will suffer from Naaman's leprosy forever. When Gehazi left the room, he was covered in leprosy. His skin was white as snow. Now, y'all could just imagine my my face. When I read this, I said, wait, what? Now, this is the New Living Translation. And so if leprosy is a curse and now he's been cursed with leprosy, him and his descendants have been cursed with leprosy. And now His skin was white as snow because of this curse. That means his skin must have been a different color beforehand. Now, do with that as you will. Ask God for continued revelation, but that's right there in the Bible. And if, like people like to say, our own black people like to say that the Bible was written by a white man, the Bible, you know, was man-made, da-da-da-da-da. If it was made by these people who have this color skin, do you think that they would have put this in there? Because everybody knows that leprosy is a curse. And I know this is in the Bible more than once. I just haven't got to that yet. And when I get to there, I may or may not share with you guys. Okay. The purpose here is not to share any, not to spread or share any type of hatred for anybody else. Let me keep, let me be very, very clear. Very, very clear here. The purpose here is to allow you to become more knowledgeable. Okay, now that you have the knowledge of that and you have a better understanding of who God's chosen people were, let's get to the point in where we say, okay, yeah, we know who God's chosen people were and who they are, but God's blessings are not just for the Jews anymore. They're for the Gentiles as well. Why? Because the Jews couldn't get it together. I've been saying this for so long, y'all. And then this makes me so passionate because again, like I said, I love history and I also love the Lord. I also love Jesus. So just mention the two together, you guys. It's just been so much fun for me, but such an eye opener and like a mind blowing thing. And it's just like, oh my goodness, as you continue to read the Old Testament, they literally could not get it together. And then Jesus, and then God sent Jesus and they killed. They're Messiah. Like, oh my goodness. It just, you guys. <laughs> so at this point, we know who God's chosen people were and who they are. But the thing here is, and I'm going I'm to leave this episode right here. <laughs> and we're going to have a part two to this. It'll come out next week. The thing is, yes, all the things that you research and you find out, most definitely are true. A lot of what we have learned throughout history, which we already know, it's been false. Like things have been construed and and misused and abused and twisted and turned to fit a certain narrative. And that's just what it is. But the fact of the matter is the Jews could not get it in order. They would not listen to their Lord to their God. They would not listen no matter how many times he proved himself to them, no matter how many times he saved them, no matter how many times he he made them rich in in all the different types of ways. They would not I don't know I I just don't get it to be honest, but they would not get it together. And if you look at us today, Jew or Gentile, a lot of us, many of us, specifically Black Americans, specifically people with darker color skin, a lot of us who have large impacts, have large followings, have a lot of influence, a lot of us are still 
not doing what God said, are still not following his rules and his laws, are still not living a life for him. No matter how many times people say God, no matter how many times people say Jesus, they still follow it up with a curse word. They still do things that are blasphemous. They still partake in things that are blasphemous. They still partake in things that are evil. And that's just the the matter, the fact of the matter here. You know, we are figuring out and we're learning all of this truth and we're becoming knowledgeable about the things that are pagan and the things that we've been taught. They all been lies and and all of these different things and who the, the real Jews are and all these different things. Yet, yet. As a people, we are still sinful. So. My question is. Yeah, now that we know the truth, that's really great. But now that we know the truth, nobody's changing anything about themselves. Everybody still wants to follow a Jesus that they think is only about love and not about change. You cannot encounter Jesus, Yeshua, the the God of ancient Israel, his son. You cannot encounter him and think that you don't have to change. And so... You know, I could go on and on about this, but that that's just the fact of the matter of what's going on here. And as successful servant leader, you should be privy to these things. You should know what's going on and you should be ignorant to Satan's devices, but very much have your eyes wide open and have that 2020 vision in the spirit realm. And so, like I said, I'm going to leave this episode right here and we're going to come back next week and dive into December and 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 what God has told me for this month and and what he shared with me and how you should definitely be prepared to behave going forward if you truly want to be real MVP, successful servant leader and go from, you know, dreamer to doer and go from, you know, disobedient to obedient and go from, you know, being stuck and stagnant to actually being modern pioneer woman who is actually just a trailblazer who is actually proverbs 31 woman who is actually all these things you know so i love you guys so much i hope that you enjoyed this episode and let me know what you think reach out send me a dm send me an email all of that information is available in the show notes again join me inside of my amazing community dare to pursue it is free and once you join you do get access to my free audio class master your mind expose your enemy and level up your thinking you get free access to that um it's an hour long and it is amazing from what i've heard so far and for what i think right so i see you guys in our next episode